Thank you so much for that, Stephen. Um, wow, I didn't know I was doing all that while I was shooting the movie. <laughs> I was an army who plays Oliver at once, and the film critic Anthony Lane was around, and I said to Army, oh, you know, it's Anthony Lane, I really want to speak to him, I, I love his writing. And Army said, you don't want to speak to that guy? I would get to say what the movie is way smarter than what you have to say. <laughs> so, and, and sure enough, he asked me about, uh, about a book I was reading in a specific scene, and I didn't know what it was at the time, but 16 months later, I did it, and I thought, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, anyhow, sorry. sorry. Thank you so much to the Los Angeles Film Critics Association for this honor. And as always, thank you to Michael Barker and Tom Bernard and Sony Picture Classics for taking on this movie, believing in it. You guys are very close this time. So. <laughs> and, and the biggest thanks obviously goes to my director and the maestro, Ruku Guadagnino, but I will thank you for all the way. Something particularly gratifying about getting this award is I was born and raised in New York, and I hope that isn't like blasphemy here. <laughs> Los Angeles has always scared me a bit. But in truth, Los Angeles has become a second home of sorts in recent years. One of the sweeter moments of the last year was getting to bring my sister to the Golden Globes. She was elated and proud, and I could look around and be assured that I was not the least famous person there. Because that was my sister. <laughs> honestly, my, my favorite part of this last year, getting to act in other films and getting to talk about Call Me By Our Name, has not been having to audition constantly. I try to learn from the folks I work with, and I did a reading with William H. Macy once, who said to me that the best thing that happened to him in, in his life, besides having a wife and kids, was not having to constantly audition. <laughs> you know, in New York, I could have a terrible audition, and to make up for my mood, I could dance on the subway for 30 minutes. And to those of you that thought that was metaphorical, it's not. <laughs> a lot of my old rap videos have made their way online, and I'm just waiting for a video of me dancing on a two train. <laughs> and yet, in Los Angeles, this was never the case. A terrible audition is always followed by a long Uber ride home. <laughs> I've often thought to myself, the most important part of auditioning is the second you leave the room. The easier you go on yourself, the more likely you'll be able to bounce back and act without anxiety the next time you audition. And this was just a mentality I always had a hard time describing to in Los Angeles. The emptiness and existential crisis that it is to walk out of a casting office on Sunset Boulevard was overwhelming. In 2015, I auditioned for a casting director named Sarah Finn at her office on 588 North Washburn Boulevard in a project I was dying to do, Spider-Man. <laughs> I read twice and I left sweating in a total panic. I called my agent, Brian Sforstrom, who's here tonight, and I said to him, Brian, I thought about this a lot, and I have to go back and knock on that door and read again. And he told me the story of Sean Young, who, in an attempt to become Catwoman, had scared everyone away when she showed up at the studio gates in Boston. <laughs> the irony is that it was a project in which I met the, der the director three years prior that wasn't a big studio film, and where I never auditioned that has been the medium to getting to go to dinners and things like this, and to get an introduction like the one I got from you, Stephen, which, please, 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 for everyone in the room know, this doesn't fly with my head for a second. None of this is taken for granted. I know the risk of what it is to become an old, washed up person now because of this moment. So, <laughs> um, and uh, I, I'm just so appreciative that it was a story that feels like it had to be told about uh, a boundaryless and definitionless expression of love that is maybe counterintuitive to the Western and stringent ways we've talked about love and sexuality in the past, that again is the medium in which I get to be here with all of you tonight. Now, Luca, you are, <laughs> this means nothing coming from a 22 year old, but seriously, you're like a genius to me. And the experience came to be there a month and a half prior to the movie, and Luca has this incredible screening room in Cremo where we shot the movie, this beautiful apartment. And it was like a film education, it was really like getting to go to school. Uh, and where I watched Babette's Feast, which I understand to be a great movie, but uh, it's just not my kind of movie, Luca. It's great, it's great. It's excellent, look at the critics shaking her head. It's excellent, it's, just, it's not for me. And, but, also, but also Alien, which is a great movie that I love. Um, and, and, and Body Double. Um, so, listen, it's true. 
And I'm still at a loss as to why you took a chance on someone with as little street cred as myself. But thank you, and I, I said it before, but you, you, this is the ride of a lifetime, Luca, really. And, and I talked about like someone like Spider-Man, and weirdly it's the gift of the universe here that I'm, 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 I'm getting people saying, keep, you know, keep working on these kinds of projects, and keep working with things of integrity, and, and they're more independently oriented, and certainly if it was, you know, a Chris Nolan opportunity or Guillermo, you know, give me a call if you want to work with that. Totally serious about that. Exactly. exactly. Please, please. Uh, and that's great, but uh, I, uh, I, I, I know what an honor this is, and that, you know, I want to do everyone in here proud that they gave me a vote. And, and you know that I'll pre pre continue pursuing these things with integrity. But the last person I mentioned that can really is only the perfect roadmap when I look at this, and it's Michael Stuhlbarg. And thank you so much, Michael, for the mentorship on this movie. And as I said, I'm a New York guy, and you know, New York. Michael is a stage legend in New York, and it was Martin McDonough, the Pillow Man. That was my first exposure to him. But I mean, with the Shape of Water and the Post and Calling by Your Name and Fargo. It's like, how do you do it, man? <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, I don't end awkwardly like that, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to. But seriously, thank you so much for having me.